Yes, indeed. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening and welcome to what is the last Kelly in the current series. Oh. Mind you, we still have a bit to go before we finally say goodbye for the summer, though. So for the next hour and a half or so, sit back and relax while we bring you the very best of entertainment. And we start with a man who was actually booked to appear in Kelly a couple of months back, but who unfortunately couldn't make it then. But he did promise that he would come over before the end of the series. Well, he is a man of his word. And I'm delighted to say that he has made it tonight. Would you please give a big welcome to the brilliant Robin Gibb. Thanks for coming. It's a pleasure. It's been difficult. It's been a very difficult time for you and your family yeah. this past three or four months. Yeah, it's been very difficult. Has it taken much out of you all? It's taken a lot because it was so unexpected. Um, you know, with Morris going, it's... Uh, because it was, it was so fast and um, something that we felt was totally unnecessary yeah. because of, of what happened. And, you know, when you lose somebody really close, I don't think you know what it's like until you experience it. Other people can talk about it. But to, to, when it happens uh, to, to yourself, it's, um, it changes you. It uh, turns you into a different person. But it's been very, it's, it's, it's been very hard, obviously. It's, it's, it's Health-wise, very... too, it, it's taken a bit of a toll yeah. on you. Well, health-wise, it's on my, you know, on my, my nerves because I've been preoccupied with, with a whole new situation. Um, it's not just like lo losing a colleague, you know, of, um, uh, you know, that you've been working with because, you know, we'll, this is a twin brother. I've been with, with you all your life. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was, it was, I was in shock. It was in total shock. I, I noticed just after his death, you, you seemed to immerse yourself in, in work. Yeah. Was it, looking back on it now, three months after the, the time, was that a good idea or a bad idea, do you think? Uh, well, it depends how you look at it. A lot, of, a lot of people would look at it as a bad idea and probably bad taste, but I had to, I saw it as a sort of survival thing, you know, this, to keep myself sane. If I sat s still and uh, did nothing, I'd keep thinking about it all the time, and that wasn't good either. So I had to do something that was going to take me out of it. It didn't, of course. But um, it, it's just something, you know, sort of, it was action, and I, 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 I needed that. Because you were a twin, was there a special bond there, a different bond than with you and your other brothers? I think that the bond, uh, we've always had, the three of us have always had a special bond, because we've always been songwriters from early childhood. We've always been creating things, and it was a kind of this, this world that we lived in of creativity ever since we were children. And it, we were almost like triplets in a way. Uh, so it wasn't like Barry was separate from me and Morris. So we were, the three of us were extremely close, but obviously there is there's that aspect of being born together and doing th everything together. And, and there are times always, you know, at night we were always together. We, we slept in the same bed from, as from babies, you know, so you are a twin. And um, it is a strange feeling just, you know, not having him in the world anymore. The, your grief... It's, it's difficult enough to cope with grief uh, privately. Yeah. But because of who you are, you had to cope with your grief very publicly. Yeah, I think also, you know, a lot of people, uh, and I think when people are in the public eye, uh, people who, who like Morris and his work tend to remember him in a different way than, than I would. You know, I, I, I obviously, have, I, you know, when I go to bed at night, you know, all the memorial services in the world, you know, don't really end it for me, you know, I, I wake up to the, the reality of, of Mo not being in the world every day, and it's a life sentence, I live that. So, but I remember Morris, the person and the man that, that I, uh, and the child, of course, the, the boy that, that, that I knew all my life, and the one, that's the person I'm going to miss, not, not Morris the musician, and, you know, the, the, and the great talent that he was, and that I, that I loved, and was inspired by, but it's, it's also, you know, that, that person that no one else knew, that I, only I could know. Of course. Um, and I'm sure there are many people in the world that have lost people and, and very people, people that are very close to them that, that feel the same as, as me. And it's not a unique thing because you do, you don't miss the person for what they are professionally. You know, when, when you're working with you miss, them, miss the person. Have you got through that grieving process though? Have you been allowed to grieve privately? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know how how one addresses grief, because I don't know how to, I've never really gone through this before, and I think uh, grief is a, is a kind of phase, it's a wave, it goes in waves, there's so the days where you feel fine about it, and you can accept it, and you think you're, you're over it, and then there are, there are nights where it just hits you, with this total disbelief, 
So it, grief is an ongoing process uh, that could probably last you all your life. There's no such thing as, as, uh, as time will make it better. Time will not make it better. Time just pushes it to a certain point in, in, in your mind. And I'm sure there's a lot of people will tell you the same thing, that you be, it becomes a compartment that you pull out every now and again. But sometimes it can sneak up on you. Yes, yes. And it, it, it is a process. Uh, you, you mentioned earlier that at the time the family was very upset you felt for a while that that he really shouldn't have died the way he did do you still feel that absolutely yeah he had a very uh he, he had a very common um ailment which could have been fixed by a routine operation that is a routine operation and uh, it, uh, in our eyes it was total negligence right down the line from from doctor uh, right through to the uh but, but beginning with the doctor, it was total negligence. And can you do anything about it? Right? Well, yes, you can. We can't bring him back. That's the, that's the problem. That's the only result that anyone would like <laughs> in anything. Um, you can only get your revenge by punishing those people that you feel uh, did, the, um, did the mistakes. But obviously, again, you know, that is a process. That would be a legal process, and that's really are, are you going to go through that legal process? I think we are, yes. I think we are. I think we have to. That makes it all the more... To, to make it safe for other people. I understand. But it makes the whole thing even sadder. In many well, it does. It's totally unnecessary. Yeah. Because there are many people that uh, suffer from what Morris did. And we're out in a few days, you know, just a routine operation. You, you've had huge success. And, you know, like Morris, you've, I'm, I'm sure Morris's death brings back the painful memories of your other brother's death, Andy, back mm. in, in 1988. Yes. Um, that was um, Andy, of course. And... And he was uh, a lot younger as well. And uh, again, you know, it's um, another death that was totally unnecessary. But uh, and the, the sad thing, Andy was never part of the group, but um, he was eventually going to be yeah. a part. And uh, but it was always um, he always felt that he wanted to do things on his own. And he was just starting. I I think he wanted to do things that weren't always associated with music. I think he wanted to be a pilot and things yeah. like that. But he, you know, he had those dreams uh, just before he died. But um, it's again, it's, a, it's always sad when somebody young dies. Do you feel in any way you're, maybe a silly question, but in some way you've been punished for all the success that you've achieved? Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, it certainly seems unkind and, and uh, you, you wouldn't have thought that uh, it would happen to two people. And Morris is still relatively young in his life uh, to be taken away. And uh, it, it doesn't feel right. And, um, and it's particularly... Um, Sad uh, because you know you know this this could have been prevented. Morris definitely could have been prevented. Morris would obviously want you to continue with music, you, you and Barry. Yeah. But I mean, what happens to Bee Gees? Do we hear that name again? Well, it's with Morris going. We, me and Barry, have sort of half, uh, half and half decided whether or not to to continue with the name. Uh, I'll just keep it in history as where it is with with Morris, uh, or uh, to carry on as as Barry and Robin. Uh, as writers and producers and not necessarily doing things together with, with that that scenario changes and and, and uh, goes back and forth uh, over the weeks because you've got to remember it's still it's still only 12 weeks since, since Morris died so it's still relatively early in what we feel you know is going to be the right way to go so we're still making up our minds about that you, you've, a, you've a solo album out of, out of the yeah uh, has the heart been knocked out of that for you though the heart's been knocked out of my whole world. Uh, it's hard to, to to imagine what I've been feeling over these last few weeks. It's just been it's just been soul destroying. Everything that you do and everything around you takes on a different meaning. It just it's almost like you know life's a joke and and, and, and trick, yeah, an illusion as it were. You know almost you know uh, you question everything. And I think this is a normal thing that people go through. I would have thought so. Uh, because it was, cause you just had somebody taken away from you and, and, and you work so hard and long for something and then they, they, they leave. And um, you no longer feel like you can share anything. Where you get something happen, you feel like picking up the phone and talking to Morris while he's not there anymore. You know? So there's, there's lots and hundreds of things that you let go. But are you, are you, you're now going to promote the, the, the new album. Yeah. You've decided to work again and, yeah. and, and, and to immerse I think, yourself I think in that's it what Morris would have wanted. I think I, I have to do that. Yeah. I would have thought so. Yeah. It's a, this is your fifth solo album. Yeah, is it, it is. important for you to, throughout your career, to have kept your own identity as well as with yeah. the Bee Gees? Well, it's, uh, it's not just to, to keep an identity or even a separate career. It's just to, to do things uh, for the sake of action. I like to create and get in the studio and do things. And if, if there's another way of doing it, that isn't the Bee Gees as well, then yeah. I'll go and do it as a solo yeah. artist.
<laughs> How's your wife, Dwina, by the way? She's very well. She's in Miami writing at the moment for... So she's doing some Irish plays for the New York stage. In case people don't know where Dwina comes from, how did you yeah, she's a Tyrone woman. Yeah, she she's a Tyrone woman. She was on the show a few years back. Yeah, from Kilscarry. From Kilscarry, County yeah. Tyrone. Do you get a chance to go over to Northern Ireland? Yeah, Island? absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you are a frequent visitor. You sneak in and sneak out. I sneak in and out. Without letting any, anyone know. Sort of. uh, Robin, as you know, time is a great healer, and, and uh, we hope yeah. that uh, time will heal. Thanks for your feeling at the moment. That's very kind. You are going to sing for us a track I from am. that album, isn't yes. it? Yes. Very appropriate song. Yes, Love Hurts. Yeah. Love Hurts. Robin, thanks for coming. Thanks very much. Robin, give ladies and gentlemen.